One area that I do go into great detail uh, of in the book is the, is the whole question of, of how you practice uh, golf to, to get the be very best out of your time. One of my other passions in, in, in life, apart from golf, is, is cricket. Um, whether you love or loathe cricket, I'm sure you'll have heard of the name Don Bradman. Um, the, the Don, as he, as he was known, has attached to his name the, 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 the most incredible statistic in the whole of sport. Um, a batsman at cricket has a batting average. Now, if you think of currently, if you were a world-class test player, anything around the 50 mark it is you, you are one of the very elite, you're one of the be very best batsmen in the world. Well, over a 25-year career, great Don Bradman averaged 99.94. It, it's, it's off the charts in terms of a statistic. The, the, the next best in the history of the game is around about 60. Why am I telling you that was, for me, a really interesting thing is many years ago in, in Australia when I was asked to present to the Australian PGA, I met a, a man who knew Bradman personally and he talked about how Bradman had a, a practice routine that he pretty much used every day from being a, a young boy all the way through his career. And what he used to do, what Bradman used to do, was he would, he would hold a cricket stump in his hand and throw a, a golf ball at a tank stand and the ball would ping back and he would have to defend the golf ball with the cricket stump. Now can you imagine that, that this tiny object is coming back at him with a, with a, a bat that's smaller than his cricket bat? And what Bradman said was that he looked back on that game that he played and what it helped him to do was develop focus and concentration. But also what it did, it, was, it made the real game appear easier because when he got on the field with a bigger bat and a bigger ball, the perception had changed. The perception was that he had more time. He was renowned for playing shots that nobody else played because he appeared to have so much time than everybody else. What Bradman understood, understood and many golfers don't, is that he made a part of his practice more difficult than the game. What we tend to do at golf is we tend to stand on that range in the easiest environment possible. We stand there with a bunch of balls hitting one club after another, time after time after time. And, and there is a part for that to play. There's a part for repetition in terms of grooving certain skills. But one of the things I want you to consider is how you could make certain elements of your practice more difficult than the actual game itself. One obvious area is, is with putting, that over the years you know, we've worked an awful lot with players instead of just putting to a hole and, and missing a whole bunch of putts is to make the target much smaller, whether that's making the hole smaller, but I, I prefer to take it an even step further, is to actually practice to tease, or even indeed a number of players have had great success by actually putting to a needle tiny needle that we put in the ground and it's amazing when you find that you can you can actually keep hitting that target over and over again what it does then is it gives you the perception that the size of the hole has changed when you actually play the game but a key element one of the key chapters in in the book is to, is to really take a look at how you spend your time practicing is it really productive time you're actually out there just hitting balls I've got sick and tired over the years of people telling me that they've worked hard at the game and the definition of working hard is just standing there for hour after hour hitting loads and loads of balls. If your results aren't what you want from the game, chances are that the way that you practice is contributing to your static level or even going worse. So have a real good look at that. As I say, it's a key element of the book. Again, it's what you place your attention on in terms of your practice as to whether you will make progress in the future. One chapter that I've learned, one chapter that I've learned. 
one of the chapters in the book that we dedicate is to other sports and I, I've been very fortunate over the years to, to have the opportunity to, to work in other sports like football and cricket, snooker and if I think of all of the other sports I've worked in probably the one I've learned the most from is having the opportunity to work in, in the brutal tough world of, of rugby league two great coaches Nathan Brown and Paul Anderson given me the opportunity to work with their teams and it became very apparent early on a the brutality of the game clearly the honesty of the game the endeavor of the game but also the way that the players approached it from a mental perspective one very specific thing that we got a number of players to do is to be very very clear before the game started what the specific role was what what did they need to do on that pitch as an individual to then contribute to the team we, we very much came to the conclusion that that a great team is is a bunch of individuals doing what they need to do focused on their role given to them by the coach one unbelievably simple technique that proved really effective and a lot of players reported back the impact that they, it had on them was to very simply first of all identify what that player was committed to do on the pitch that day but before they played is to very simply write out a couple of words to what their commitments were the very simple act of writing out a couple of things that they were going to focus on on the pitch that they were going to be committed to for themselves and their teammates and I think in the modern world in many ways we've, we've, we've lost some some simple truth there's so much gadgetry around but what I find the very act of actually physically writing down a commitment before you go and play your sport actually massively increases the chance that you're going to carry on with that all the way through so a couple of words a couple of key ideas get yourself a journal and just over the next 10 15 rounds that you play just make a promise to yourself that you're going to write down the answer to this very simple question that question would be what am i committed to today what am i committed to today the answer is for you to decide it's for you to choose but i guarantee that if you write down your commitments you are massively increasing the chances of following through with those commitments and then leaving the round with a sense of satisfaction because you've done everything that you can do that day